My name is Ben Saunders and I'm a professor of English at the University of Oregon where I also run the comic studies minor. I wrote a book on, my first book is on the 17th century poet John Donne. My second book is called Do the Gods Wear Capes? Spirituality, Fantasy and Superheroes and it's, a, it's about spirituality, fantasy and superheroes. And um, I've got some edited collections as well as a co-edited collection on popular music. I have a collection on the comic artist Jack Kirby and then there are individual essays here and there on different things. Charles Schultz, Keith Moon. <laughs> I founded the um, University of Oregon undergraduate minor in comic studies, which is, uh, to my knowledge, the first undergraduate minor of its kind in the United States. The beautiful thing about comic studies is that it kind of melds with any anything. We don't particularly attract just one kind of major. We attract students from across the university who are trying to sort of broaden their profiles and do something that is both intellectually stimulating and enjoyable. Um, so. Um, I teach a couple of classes in that, that minor, but I have many colleagues who, um, who also teach within the minor. I've been a fan since I was a child. I probably have my job as an English professor because, because of comics. I, uh, I learned to read primarily initially from comics. And um, I, I think of it as a, a great and beautiful medium that has never been uh, up until recently not really perhaps being given its due. I think we're living at a very interesting time now where fortunately for people like me there there is finally a recognition, um, a willingness to take this, this medium seriously. I think it's a much older medium than a lot of people realize. I, I take a very historical approach to the concept of comics. I think that it is at least as old as print culture. There weren't any jobs in comic studies when I was hired. I was hired to teach 17th century poetry, Shakespeare, that kind of thing. And I still teach that kind of thing and I, I love doing it. Um, but I started teaching comics in uh, 2008 or so. And ever since then it's really been student driven in terms of the interest, the, the, the feedback and the response that I've got from students about the field has made me want to do more. I'm usually giving a lecture on something that I'm working on at the time. I think the first one that I ever gave here was on um, the um, bondage themes in Wonder Woman comics and the, at the time what was a very uh, little known history of uh, the creator William Moulton Marston and his theories. He had some very interesting psychological theories that he used in early Wonder Woman comics. Um, since then movies have been made about Marston and, and his work and it's it's better understood perhaps than it was when I was first doing this. So um, that was what got the ball rolling. It was well received here when I did that and, and they've invited me back to do other things. So I, you know, I did a lecture on Batman one year and, and this year I chose Schultz um, in part because it was just something that I'd recently written and I was very interested in and I remain very interested in um, uh, Peppermint Patty as a kind of symbol of alternative desire. I also though, just think of Schultz as, I think, I think Peanuts is a, a, a great American masterwork that takes in the whole of the second half of the 20th century. I think it's uh, a mediated form of biography through which Schultz expressed a lot of um, deep personal feelings and ambivalences and joy um, about the world. Um, I think that it's uh, a masterpiece of abstraction as a cartoonist. Uh, I think of Schultz as somebody who um, knew how to do an extraordinary amount with the bare minimum. You really need to love something uh, to spend that kind of time with it, um, especially if you're writing a critical study, which will be read by, you know, a small number of obsessive aficionados. Um, you know, to take the time and the energy to, to really pour yourself into a fairly narrowly conceived project like that, um, it has to be motivated by love. And um, so, well, who knows, maybe this is the germinal seed, you know, the first portion of a larger work on Peanuts. Um, I, 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 I would I don't know. I don't know what's next, of course. Um, I never quite know what's going to happen next. It, it, 
I am very privileged in that my job allows me to chase after my obsessions um, intellectually and as long as there's an audience for them, uh, I'm allowed to keep doing that. Uh, that's a really interesting question in a way because I think I suppose if you're willing to claim that the arts can enhance and expand people's lives, then you have to be willing to grant the arts the power to warp and, dis and distort people's perspectives. And I do, actually. I believe that sometimes some of the most compelling art that I've encountered in, in my life could also be considered dangerous in some ways. Um, I, I think that um, that wouldn't just be true of comics, of course. That would be true of, 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 of any artistic medium. Um, and a lot of it depends, I suppose, on the mood in which it catches you. Uh, I think that I'm increasingly interested in thinking about, I'm a huge fan of superheroes. I'm not um, a hostile critic of, of that genre at all, but I am interested in thinking more about um, the fantasy of self-righteous violence as one that um, has dangerous implications. I think that it's, it should be obvious that the fantasy of self-righteous violence has dangerous implications. And it's also the fantasy of Batman, right? That's how Batman's behavior is justified. The violence is justified because, um, uh, because he's the Dark Knight. So I wonder, I'm interested in thinking a bit more about those implications. I think it's still, it depends on that magical circuit that is completed when the product of an artist mediated through a work of literature or storytelling the circuit is then closed by the, 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 the reader and you have uh, that kind of loop of human exchange. And I think that um, an awful lot depends not just on the artist who created and their mastery of the material that they have then mediated and handed on, but the, who it is that receives it. I don't, I don't believe in a straightforward one-to-one -one equation of good stuff in, good stuff out, garbage in, garbage out. I don't, I don't believe that. I think that, um, I think that you know, some of the highest and most inspiring material that human beings have ever created could be received by a particular kind of reader in a way that would be destructive and negative. And I think that very ordinary, almost banal forms of popular expression can be converted by individual readers into something very high and very beautiful. You know, a pop song that I might have no interest in when I hear it on the radio, when I hear my child sing it, um, suddenly I hear, hear beauty in it, you know. Um, when I hear Richard Thompson doing Whoops, I Did It Again instead of Britney Spears, suddenly I realize there's maybe something extraordinary there, you know. Uh, it depends on that circle of, 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 of reception. Um, so, which is why I suppose in the end I'm not an advocate for any form of censorship. Um, what I am an advocate of is more education and people learning how to be differently receptive to the works that they enjoy. I, it's fine to enjoy Batman as long as you don't start thinking that complicated geopolitical problems can be solved by a punch in the face, you know. I, I think that uh, if if people want to become scholars of any kind of material, um, you know, whether it's medieval literature or whether it's uh, uh, pu pure mathematics or, you know, string theory or whether it's comic studies, um, it's a profession that rewards obsession. It's a profession that rewards um, very single-mindedness of focus. I mean, you really have to be prepared to work weekends, but it doesn't feel like work perhaps some of the time because you are, um, because you like it, that's the idea. It's just a real tough field. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, and a certain amount, like any really tough field, um, a certain amount of luck is required. I have been lucky, really lucky, and you know, if you win, if you get a job that 230 other people applied for, um, uh, you're delusional if you believe that you got that solely on your own pure merit. You know, it took some luck, and that's that's how I, I you know I feel very blessed. 
I can't advise people go forth and be lucky. Um, I do think that, um, it, you know, obsession um, and, uh, and a real willingness to put hours and hours into getting better at something quite often things that most other people won't care about. It doesn't matter again whether you're a scientist or whether you're a sociologist or whether you're an artist or a humanities person. Um, most of the time, most people will find what you do very abstract and rarefied and it's and won't be that interested in chatting with, it, uh, with you about it at a party. Um, you got to be prepared for that. You know, find your little circle of obsessives.